Doctor Strangelove was released in 1964, was directed by Stanley Kubrick, is in black and white, and focuses on a bunch of US officials and generals frantically trying to stop one of their bombers from dropping a nuclear bomb on Russia during the Cold War. Failsafe was released in 1964, was directed by Sidney Lumet, is in black and white, and focuses on a bunch of US officials and generals frantically trying to stop one of their bombers from dropping a nuclear bomb on Russia during the Cold War. Now, I don't know about you, but something about these two films seems rather... similar. Coincidence? I think not! So, the question I ask you is this. Why did these two great directors release two near-identical movies in the exact same year? And I just want to make something very clear before I get fully into this. This isn't a video of me trying to decide which movie is better and which is worse. I'm making this video for two very specific reasons. One, to get to the bottom of why these films were so similar and why they came out at the exact same time. And two, is how these two films took the exact same premise and made it work in their own distinct ways. Because despite having a lot in common, these films actually managed to do one very crucial thing in completely different ways. But first we need to do a bit of history homework. It all starts in 1958 with this book here, Red Alert by Peter George. This book would act as the sole inspiration for Kubrick's Doctor Strangelove, so much so that the film would essentially be an adaptation of the book, with George collaborating on the screenplay with Kubrick and satirist Terry Southern. However, if we skip ahead four years to 1962 when Eugene Burdick and Harvey Wheeler released their best-selling book Failsafe, we'll start to see things get very interesting. When George realised that Failsafe very closely resembled the premise of Red Alert, he and Kubrick took action by suing Burdick and Wheeler for copyright infringement. Eventually, this lawsuit was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount, but it doesn't stop there. Due to the many similarities between the two films, and even the books they were based on, as well as the fact that Failsafe boasted an acclaimed cast and crew including Sidney Lumet in the director's chair, and highly regarded dramatic actors such as Henry Fonda and Walter Matthau, Kubrick started to worry. Though Lumet had already casted Fonda and everything in terms of pre-production was running smoothly, that's when the lawsuit arrived. And to top it all off, Kubrick continuously argued the many ways in which Failsafe had copied Red Alert from the plot, to characters such as Professor Grutterschel, who he thought shared identical intentions to that of the character of Strangelove, even though the actual character of Strangelove was never in the book Red Alert in the first place, and was purely made up for the sake of the film. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, I'll try and let you figure out how that doesn't make any sense. Now, as far as I'm aware, Burdick and Wheeler never confirmed or denied whether Red Alert influenced their book, but considering the similarities between the two, it's very hard to dispute that one isn't copying the other. Certain things here and there may have been altered, but I would say a solid 95% of the core concept and its setup is pretty identical. As previously mentioned, the lawsuit was settled out of court, but it came with an agreement that acted as a double-edged sword for the production of Failsafe. On the positive side, it was agreed that both films would be distributed and financed by Columbia Pictures, which worked in Lumet's favour as the film up to that point had been independently financed. However, what really screwed over Failsafe was the fact that Kubrick essentially got first dibs on having his film released first. Doctor Strangelove opened to critical acclaim and a very respectable $9.5 million in US gross, whereas Failsafe opened 8 months later to widespread critical acclaim, but an underperforming US gross of just under $4 million and this is all because Kubrick insisted for his film to be released first. Okay, so now that the history behind it is out of the way, we can now talk about the films themselves, and believe it or not, 
Despite the fact that both films and both books have pretty much the exact same premise, there is a key difference in the films that sets them apart. And if you've seen either of the films, then you know exactly what I mean. Failsafe approaches this story in a completely grounded manner, to the point where it does feel scarily real to an extent, as the true horror and dread of the situation is brought to the forefront and it never lets up. Doctor Strangelove on the other hand tackles the story in a purely comedic fashion. The characters in the film at first try to be rational and clear in their decisions on the matter, but just end up arguing half of the time and don't appear to take the situation as seriously as you'd think. There is also a slight difference in both films in terms of the reasons the bombers are actually sent to Russia in the first place, thus adding to these varying tones and genres. In Failsafe, a bomber goes to Moscow after receiving the activation code needed for this operation, but it was a complete accident due to a technical malfunction, hence why everyone is so desperately trying to stop the bomber, adding to the tension and realistic tone. Whereas in Doctor Strangelove, the only reason the bomber heads to Russia in the first place is because an insane army general gave them the go-ahead. Yeah, you can really start to see how the two films differ at this point. Apart from that, the tone and overall approach for each film is what drastically separates the otherwise identical plots. And personally, I think both films are fantastic in their own rights, as they constantly play up to the strengths of the very tone they are going for. Doctor Strangelove just gets funnier and more ridiculous as it goes on, whereby Failsafe starts off fairly normal and gets incredibly more suspenseful the more the situation plays out. One of the best examples I have for showcasing these two varying tones is how they choose to conclude their very straightforward storylines. Um, spoiler alert, but both films end with a nuclear holocaust taking place. But the way each film presents this horrifying outcome emphasises the approaches each film is going for. For example, this is how Doctor Strangelove tackles it. The title character, who take into account has been confined to a wheelchair the whole movie, suddenly is able to stand up, to the stunned silence of everyone in the war room, only for it to abruptly cut to a montage of nukes going off as We'll Meet Again by Vera Lynn plays over the top of it. This is a very jarring and over-the-top way of presenting the end of the world, but because it is presented in this way, you kind of can't help but laugh at it whilst also being slightly unsettled at the same time. Now, Failsafe, on the other hand, approaches it in a much more harrowing manner, shall we say? After all attempts to stop the bomber have failed, the president's final idea is to drop one of their own bombs onto New York to settle the playing field if their bomber did indeed reach Moscow. After he puts the plan into effect, we get this very haunting and rather disturbing scene of hearing the nuclear bomb hit Moscow over the phone. Yes, Jay. which is followed a few minutes later by the bombing of New York, which is presented like this. Countdown from 10, give me the signal. Nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, mark. Well, 
like I said before, both films are great in their own right, and I cannot recommend them enough. Failsafe is a masterclass in increasing tension to an insane level and never fully letting it go, whereas Doctor Strangelove is commonly regarded as one of the best comedies ever made, and quite rightfully so. Both films are excellent showcases of two amazing directors working at the top of their game. It's just a shame that they were both hindered by troubling circumstances. Thank you so much for watching this video, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to read them and start a discussion of some kind. Uh, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye!